Over the last week or so, I've gotten the CNC set up to move the direction that I want it to go. We had some of our arrows inverted and changed around. I want my Y to be front to back and the X to be side to side. And that's what we've got set up right now. So X left to right, Y front to back. And everything is also now set up with our controller to make it all nice and easy to move around. This is also useful in setting up the Z on wood because we can get right in here on the stuff that we're doing. As far as making the Z work on this, you hold the button down until the light switches and then that's your Z. Then you go back to the other, you hold it down and you can do that stuff. As far as today goes though, we're going to set the cooling system up and we're going to handle that a little bit differently. For the cooling mixture, we're going to do this a little bit differently. A lot of folks use antifreeze and distilled water. In my opinion, outside antifreeze is fine. As far as in the house, especially in my basement, here where I do a lot of work, I don't want to be breathing it and being too close to exposed antifreeze. So instead of using that, we're going to use windshield washer fluid. Obviously, you don't want to drink this stuff, but as far as toxicity goes, I'm a little more comfortable using that inside the house. For the pump, this came with the kit. We've got our little brass fitting here. So I want to get some Teflon tape on there, and then we'll start loading up the fluid into the bucket. Brass adapter is screwed in and tightened down. And for the lid of the five gallon bucket, we've got two holes for the intake and the outtake. And as far as this inside the bucket, obviously we've got the suction cups down there. We're going to put this down inside. What I don't know is how well those suction cups will hold. You may have to put some extra weight or something else down eventually. But that's pretty tight. Got our hoses through there, in and out. As far as the power to the pump goes, you just have a little notch cut there so the lid can still close relatively tightly. The pump is down in there and placement of this bucket is going to be right behind the CNC enclosure. We've got enough space there and a reinforced shelf. This power strip will be just for the pump so we can turn that on independently. And I think the next step is to move that bucket over there and start filling it up. Well the suction cups don't hold too well. After just a few minutes they came off the bottom of the bucket and the pump was kind of rattling around in there. Chances are it would have been okay because once we've got our water level up, this does have some weight to it and it probably wouldn't matter too much if it was flopping around or if it was on its side. But I like to make things stronger if I can and I had an old grinding stone laying around. So a quick 3D printed fitting, which will go on the inside there. That'll go through there. Some stainless steel hardware and a little hole right there. We'll put the pump on that stone and just keep it a little bit more weighted down. And just a little extra weight to hold that down. I have to admit, having all this water near plugs and sensitive electronics feels very strange. I'm used to using routers and smaller spindles that are air-cooled, so this is definitely a different ball game here. But I think it'll be tight. I'm using four gallons instead of five, so we should be a fair amount below the top of that five-gallon bucket. And everything seems pretty tight, so let's start loading this up. What I'm using for the hold down, since that cap is not going to snap shut, I've got a few of these kind of shock cords that were made up, and that should hold it down pretty well. Everything's connected and tightened down. As far as the hoses connecting to the spindle, I've got these snugged up. They're not crazy tight because I don't want to smash anything, but they are snug. So what I did was I just have a few of these threads kind of coming out the top. So the next thing is to turn on the pump and see what we got. All right, I've got to admit, this is not a part of the process I've been looking forward to. 
It's a little intimidating, but let's see what we got. There's the on-off switch. We should see the blue coming through, and we might be able to follow it totally in, but we'll see what we got. I hear the pump on, and I see the lines going through the spindle. It's nice and quiet. See some bubbles going through. And I can hear the hum. It's an ever so slight hum in the background. It's interesting, that blue you really can't see too much. It's not as blue as it was in the bucket. Don't see any drips yet. So we'll let this run for a few minutes. Okay, so we've got our water flowing out into our pump. This has been on for about 10 minutes or so, and I don't see any leaks anywhere, so I'll say that very quietly. <laughs> Hope that holds. I was really expecting the water to be a lot bluer than it is. It's just ever so slightly tinted blue. And that may be the hose more than anything else. But let's turn this spindle on. And I've got this set for manual right now. And we're just going to control it manually. It can be done in the software when you're setting up your G-code. But I kind of like to be able to do this on the fly. So I'll put the camera on the spindle and we'll turn this up just a little bit and see what we've got. And there we go. Boy, is that quiet. I am so used to routers and loud air-cooled spindles that that is really quiet. And of course, we're not going very fast here. But let's raise this up. I think what we'll hear mostly is just that paper spinning around. So again, that's really pretty slow right now. And that noise is from the paper, but that's spinning fine. So let's take that paper off and see what it sounds like. We've got our tape pulled off. So let's turn this on and see. This should be a lot quieter than when that painter's tape was on there. Yeah, it's a lot quieter. It's interesting. It does sound like the whine of a jet as you crank it up. Very cool. I wanted to check the actual speed of the spindle when you control this manually. Obviously, if you do it through the software, through the G-code, it should be pretty close. I've always done the speed of routers or spindles more on the fly or more manually. So let's check this. So if we raise this up to, let's go to 100 on here. See how close we can get. That's pretty good. 100.7 on the readout. And we'll check it with our timer here. I've got a little piece of reflective tape on the actual collet. So we'll shoot the laser on it. So about 6,000 revolutions per minute when the readout is at 100 and the top speed on this is supposed to be 24,000 so let's raise this all the way up and on this readout it's going to be 400 so that's where that max is out and let's check this out that is so quiet there's a nice sound to it we are somewhere in the 24,000, a little under 24,000. So 
so pretty cool.